In this screencast, we are continuing to look at addition reactions. Specifically, we're going to look at hydration reactions and halogenation reactions. Now, when we look at a hydration reaction, this is just the addition of water to an alkene to form an alcohol. I want you to notice with water, again, we have a partially positive charge here on this hydrogen and then a partial negative here on the oxygen. And I want you to remember that this is a nucleophile. Now, acid is also the catalyst, so let's look at that mechanism. So, first off, I want to start when acid's the catalyst, a lot of times we just, instead of using H2SO4, will jump to using H3O+. And that's what you're going to see in lots of mechanisms. So when we look at this particular mechanism, we have this species. And again, remember, this, is, this oxygen is really electronegative, so it pulls electrons away. So that makes this hydrogen here partially positive. So these electrons come and they steal that proton. When they steal that proton, those electrons then go onto the oxygen. Now we follow our arrows and we can see here that hydrogen is gonna be added to one of these right here and then we have a positive charge here. Now again, um, I really kind of hate to show that hydrogen right here, I'm going to, but I really hate to show that hydrogen right here because it it always kind of tricks us and we forget that we've got two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here and another hydrogen here. So don't let it trick you. Now, the water comes back and what we find is that the water acts as a nucleophile and will be attracted here to the carbon with the partial with the positive charge. So after that nucleophilic attack, what we find right is now we have um, added the water. Then another water water molecule comes along and we remove one of those protons and those electrons go back onto the oxygen. And so now we formed our alcohol. So there's cyclohexanol. Now alcohols will add just like water does. So one of the things you see here right, is that we have an alkene and we have an alcohol that in the presence of acid will form an ether when it's added here across the double bond. Now, when we look at this mechanism, this, go, this goes exactly like the water. Um, so when we look at this, we have CH3O, and what that acid does is it protonates that alcohol right there, and so now that oxygen has a positive charge just like our water did. And so as we go through this mechanism, these electrons come here to steal that proton, and then those electrons go back up on the oxygen. When they do that, right, there are two places that we can add our hydrogen to. We can add our hydrogen to here, or we can add our hydrogen to here. And so it's really important for us to remember that this is CH3, C, CH3, double bond, CH2. And so this doesn't have any hydrogens on it. This carbon has two hydrogens on it. Our hydrogen that we add here is going to be more likely, well, it's going to be added to this carbon because of Makovnikov's rule. So that means that our positive charge then is going to end up on this carbon. Then we have the CH3OH that comes back in and will coordinate 
to that positive charge there. When that occurs, we end up with, sorry, I got really excited and wrote it in the wrong place. This molecule. And then we undergo another proton transfer to give us that molecule. And so I want you to look, I can't flip back and forth uh, with the screen casting here, but I do want you to flip back and look and look at those similarities. This is the exact same mechanism with the exact same steps. The only difference here is that this is not a hydrogen. So now we can also synthesize ethers as well as alcohols. Now let's talk about halogenation, which is another electrophilic addition reaction. And this is the specific um, electrophilic addition of a halogen. Now, halogenation is the addition of H2, where we see here that we're showing it as X2, but what you see is that it can be Cl2 or Br2. Now, this forms a vicinal dihalide, where these halogens are on adjacent carbons. Let's look at the mechanism for how this reacts. All right, so we are gonna draw our double bond here. And then we are gonna draw our ge just a generic halogen. Here. Now, halogens add to pi bonds because halogens are polarizable, right? So, this electron-rich double bond, when it comes into proximity with the halogen, induces a dipole in the approaching halogen molecule. So in the previous examples, when we've done addition, we have been using polar molecules, right, with, with polar groups. Now, this is nonpolar, but we still end up with an induced dipole. So what happens is this makes one of these halogens electron rich and one electron poor when it's in the vicinity of the double bond here. So the electrophilic halogen atom is then attracted to the nucleophilic double bond and that's what makes addition possible. Now what we see then is that these electrons come up and they will attack that halogen. Then, at the same time, these electrons are coming here to form a double bond, and these electrons go on to the ha other halogen that's there, okay? Now, four bonds are broken or formed, um, and, and that generates a bridged holonium ion. So let's look at that. So this is our bridged holonium ion. Now it's an ion, so it has a charge. The charge is here on the halogen, right? And it is really unstable because of ring strain. So the other halogen that is running around that we formed, right, it now comes and attacks one of the two carbons in that ring, and then it opens, those electrons go there to go on the halogen, and the ring will open up. And when it does that, this is what's formed, right? And so that's where we can see, we have our vicinal di dihalide here. 
Um, there's a weird thing that happens with this. And so let's look at um, the chlorination of cyclopentane. So when we look at the chlorination of cyclopentane here, right, these electrons come out here to attack this chlorine. These electrons come back to attack this carbon, and that's what forms the bridge here. And then these electrons go on the chlorine. Now, when this occurs, right, um, the initial addition to get these two molecules, right, it occurs from either side of the planar double bond, right? So, so it can happen above or below the plane. So imagine this is sitting kind of flat on your paper, and so it can happen up here or right below it. So if it comes from above, right, we're gonna say, look, these two guys are poking out, right? And then these two are kind of poking back. And these are identical achiral chloronium ions is what we call them, but they're identical, right? All you have to do is, is flip one and you get the other one. Now, in the second step, what happens is that the nucleophile, the chlorine, um, occur, has to occur from the back side, right? Well, since the nucleophile attacks um, from below, right, and the leaving group aparts from above, two chlorine atoms in the product are then oriented trans to each other, right? And so, if we attack here, then we're also oriented trans. So the reason this is kind of unusual here is that you don't get a cis addition, right? It's just a trans addition that's formed. So kind of an interesting thing that we see with um, the double bond and rings here. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.